So, John, if you were on a date with somebody and you, for some reason, had a look in their freezer and found a dead pet, such as a cat, what would you do? Well, if it was a cat, I'd marry them. I'd be like, you. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd be like, you are my kind of guy. <laughs> okay, now let's, let's say it's a fish. Okay. Oh, no. That I'd be more wary of. Mm, no. I don't more, want someone who kills fish. More wary? Okay. No. Dog. Oh, instantly out. Instantly out. I'm, I'm gone, yeah. Okay. No dog murderers in my life. Elephant. How big's the freezer? Well, if they're a comedian, then it's great. It's com- <laughs> <laughs> they got the joke. How do you get an elephant in the freezer? I don't know. Well, you open the freezer, put the elephant in, close the freezer. What comedian Sounds told that joke? <laughs> Me, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to Beyond the Box Set, a podcast where we pitch prequels, sequels and spin-offs to films that don't have any. I'm Harry, joining me as always is John. Hello. And we have a guest this week. The Hello guest. guest. Kit Shepard. Hello. And Kit, you've chosen a film this week. I have. What have you chosen? It's called May from 2002. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, We've heard of it now. Yeah, yeah. good, good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit of a horror film. I was going to ask this. So I'd never heard of this film before. Mm. Um, I guess you hadn't either. No. No. It's uh, not one that people often come across. Yeah. No, yeah, it was interesting. But how would you describe the genre of this film? Cringe. Cringe? That's to me what it would be. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I like it so much. Okay. How would you describe the genre? I think I'd go for a straight horror. Really? really? I'd describe mm. it as... It's not really a horror film until like the last mm. 10 minutes, though. I find bits of it are... For me, the standout sort of horror scene in this film is probably uh, the scene where she goes in and she's helping the blankets. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're all arguing over the doll, mm-hmm. which then falls to the ground, glass breaks, and then there's blankets just crawling around in broken glass. Mm-hmm. And, oh, come on, John. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a bad person. I, I, I thought we'd get to this later. I didn't want to open, open with this. But... I know. It feels weird to be opening with like my favourite scene. I'm sorry, already, but, but I laughed so hard. <laughs> oh, I found that scene... So funny. That man laughed at anything. <laughs> to be fair, anything. I'm sorry, but yeah. yeah. The music made that scene in my mind. That was just beautiful. Mm. Yeah, oh, I wasn't looking at the music at that point. Okay, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a question, actually? Sure. Do you actually like the film? Because that was my biggest worry, was that yeah. you're going to think it was terrible. I like it. You liked yeah. it? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, I liked honestly, it too. Honest yeah. opinion? Oh, absolutely, okay, honestly, good. yeah. Cool. yeah. Cool. I would cool. definitely watch this one again. Okay, cool. I don't know when, because... <laughs> yeah. The whole film was an experience. Mm-hmm. I would say there are bits in this film, or particularly one character in this film, which I was surprised by, was just awful. And that okay. is Anna Faris. We'll talk about that. Let's park oh, that because okay. I have a lot of thoughts on Anna Faris in this film. Okay, but yeah. okay, okay. sure. What is? It, what do you think it is about this film that does appeal to you so much that keeps drawing you back to it? I think that's the thing. Obviously, cringe probably is not a film genre, especially not in the horror it can type. Be, yeah. I think that is what appeals to me is that I cringe all the way through it. I'm a socially awkward person anyway, mm. and watching somebody that extreme, I'm just like, I can never be her. That is awesome. Like, you know, no matter how bad I think I am, I will never be as bad as her. So that is what I love about it. And So so it makes you feel good about yourself, is that... I think in a weird sort of way, it probably is that, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's not a conscious thing, but it is definitely like... Whew. You know, it makes, yeah, it makes me feel better. That is a wonderful description of why someone would like this film. As bad as it gets, I'm not this bitch. Oh, yeah, I know. 100% I will never be as bad as her. (laughs) And that's amazing. That's good. Well, let's let's all pray that that's the case, John. <laughs> so we're in trouble. The boy I saw today is different. <laughs> I like every part of him. Especially his hands. They're beautiful. 
this film felt like a patchwork to me of a lot of different horror films. Like it's got a lot of Carrie in there. Have you seen Carrie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's got a bit of Psycho in there as well, obviously. It's got a lot of Frankenstein. Sounds of the Lambs. A bit of Sounds of the Lambs, yeah. Mm. But it's also kind of its own thing. It's not derivative. Like it takes all these influences, but it does something that I've not really seen before, which I, I really appreciated. Like mm-hmm. it's definitely its own unique thing. Basic plot is it's about this girl called May, a very socially awkward, like shy person who has, we, we open with her as a child, as a little girl, and she's got a, a lazy eye. And that causes her to feel a lot of self-consciousness, obviously. Partly because her mum puts her in the worst mm. eye patch in the world. <laughs> like, yeah. No one will notice now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes up half her face. Yeah, like, yeah. It's literally like the, the, the eye patch takes up her entire face. Like, put the, eye, the fringe down it's and not, it's, it's fine. It's not even an eye patch that like she would grow into. No. no. It's just like, this is bigger than your face. Yeah. It, it's bigger than my face. <laughs> Yeah, so she's got this lazy eye and it means that she can't really socialise properly. Consequently, she never has any friends growing up. Her mum seems weird. Mm-hmm. We see her like uh, like a 10th, 11th birthday party or something. And her mum gives her the present of this doll that she has made herself. And she says, well, if you can't, if you can't find a friend, make a friend. Was that it? Mm-hmm. Some, I think, yeah. I think yeah. that was the line. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So she's made her this fucking creepy looking <laughs> doll. <laughs> Jesus. She um, put so, her so entire the, heart into that. The, the mum made it when she was a child though, didn't she? I think so, yeah. It was passed on, wasn't mm. it? Yeah. That yeah. was her friend who then... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you what, my granny has a collection of dolls, yeah. and I'm not okay with it. No. <laughs> Neither is my mum. My, my granny tried to give them to my mum at one point, and she was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, my mum had a wardrobe in my bedroom. My bedroom was the darkest room in the house. And, uh, what do yeah. you mean, like physically dark? or just sort of Physically a... dark, yeah. No sunlight got in there or okay, anything. Cool. And uh, I always just, I was terrified of the dark. She had these dolls lined up on the wardrobe that just like stared at me while I slept. <laughs> and I, I have no idea where they've gone now. Presumably they went in the bin a very long time ago. But so... not whilst I was terrified of the dark and stuck in a room with them. Sorry, so, so that, that was your bedroom? That was my bedroom, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen them since we moved out of that house, so where the hell they went, I've no clue. But I, I made you, it known that I was terrified. I tell you what, John, I'm, if ever you see Kit with a meat cleaver, <laughs> stay <laughs> away. Well. I've always said, if you can't find a friend, make one. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Her name is Susie. Susie was the first doll I ever made. She was my best friend, and now she'll be yours. Her mum gives her this doll, and it's in a glass case, and it's like, you can't you can't actually play with this doll. It's got to be behind the case the whole time. So she gets this creepy-looking doll, uh, and then it cuts to her in her late 20s, mid, mid, I don't know, I wasn't mm. sure how old she was supposed to be. But yeah, she's she's an adult anyway, and she's still dealing with her lazy eye. We open with her getting prescribed contact lenses, which means that, that she can correct it basically including a tight close-up of her putting her contact lenses into her eyes which frankly i could have done without right <laughs> yeah that's another trope isn't it touching yeah. your eyeball i'm not that bad with like general horror i quite like horror films i'm not i don't scare easy but i eye stuff i do not like mm. so all of the eye stuff was like nope nope don't want to see this don't want to see this don't like it don't like it don't like it yeah. that made it more of a horror film for me just the fact <laughs> that people kept touching their fucking eyes and i didn't yeah. want to see that <laughs> Uh, she's also working at a veterinarian's, seemingly the worst veterinarian <laughs> in the world. Like dogs are losing legs, mm-hmm. left, right, and center. Their stomachs are exploding. The, the well, vet is... that, that dog that lost the leg that wasn't that dog hadn't been to the vet before. I don't think. Or was it just supposed to be that he'd the owner would come home and had, the dog had no leg? Yeah, I mean he he phrased it very weirdly. I yeah, I thought like <laughs> yeah. he'd come to collect his dog and his dog suddenly had one fewer legs. Oh, is he? No, 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 because no, we see the severed leg later. Oh, he does, he's, you're he's right, not, he's he finds it in his backyard. Yeah, yeah. Not, I was going to say, wasn't it, that he'd gone away, had a look at his dog, had four legs, come back, and the dog had three legs. Yeah. Like, no one knows what happened, it just happened. I mean, me. that dog would have bled to death. Uh, I don't know. Also, she mm. says, uh, he says, can you sew it back on? There's this bloodied stump of a dog leg that's been like uh, detached from the dog for some time. Mm. And she's like, yeah, I can sew it back on. I was like, no, you can't. That's not how it works. I mean, you can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. She didn't promise it would work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, it's not necessarily going to work. Look, look at the end of the movie. True, yeah. But she sews all kinds of stuff to everywhere. <laughs> True. I mean, the dog probably did die, but <laughs> technically. Oh, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, she's working in this horror show of a vet surgery. And she also develops a crush on Jeremy Sisto with unacceptable hair. 
you're not a fan. His hair in that film, was, in this film, was unacceptable. <laughs> it was, it was like a, t- luscious locks, it though, was, I'm it sure. Was like, like, it was such a mop. It was yeah. such a... I thought it was a wig, but then I thought, is it? I don't think this film has like a lot of wig budget, so I'm not mm-hmm. sure it is. But... <laughs> well, it's a very low-budget film. Would they really splash out on giving Jeremy's sister a wig? Maybe just turned up that day with that hair. Mm-hmm. Well, let's face it, if there was any hair budget in this film, it was clearly going on another character, who we'll get to later. So she develops this crush on Jeremy's sister, because she really likes his hands. He's got beautiful hands. Mm-hmm. got perfect hands. And yeah, there's a whole plot line of her attempting to like flirt with him, and, but she's very shy and socially awkward. Her flirting in this film... Oh, it's brilliant. So you know what you were saying before about the, the way that she's behaving right over being just like, oh God, at least I'm not that bad. Mm. Me, me with flirting. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think there's some parallels at I least can I don't draw just, too, like, yeah. wipe myself against sleep people's hands. But yeah, her flirting in this film really reminded me of that Friends flashback episode where Monica was flirting yes. with Chandler. With the, like, we're, we're trying to make everything sexy. Like, these carrots are so sexy between my fingers. And yeah. this knife is... It really reminded me of that. Yep, yep. <laughs> so... Do you make your own clothes? Yes. That's cool. Thank you, Adam. Welcome, mate. I love your hands. I think that they're beautiful. I I used to be a hand model. I can see you doing that. Kidding, mate. So, yeah, so she has a crush on him. She goes back to his place and watches his terrible, terrible student film, which mm-hmm. I absolutely loved. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? It was so bad. And I love how it ends with the the, the end credit is in Italian. It's such yep. like a douchebaggy student film. It's like... <laughs> I loved it. And she takes it very seriously. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, okay, he's into cannibalism. Well. <laughs> she's just like, I've just found my perfect match. Mm-hmm. Basically. He was Mr. Right. After watching this film, they go to a bedroom situation and then she bites his lip and causes him to bleed all over her. And then she like wipes the blood all over her face and her neck and she's like, I thought you liked weird. And he's like, not that weird. And then he's like, I'm out. And then they break up and she's very upset because he's been her first like boyfriend figure. Although they've only been on like two dates, but sure. I can understand why she puts more onto it than it actually is. Mm. And yeah, she kind of stalks him for a little while. Mm. So while she's doing that, she's also working in the vets with Anna Faris, who, yeah, we need to talk We need to talk about Anna Faris now. So yeah, what's going on with her? I feel like Anna Faris was acting in an entirely different movie. Mm. And that movie may have been porn. <laughs> <laughs> she reminded me a lot of, I don't know the actress's name, the woman who plays the love interest in The Room. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Julia. Have you seen The Room? Yeah. I have seen it, but I can't think off the top of my head. She seemed quite wooden. She, mm. Her style of acting... Anna Faris is a great it's, comic actress. It's weird because it, she's the only person I'd heard of going into this film. Mm-hmm. And yet mm. she was my standout worst actor of the film. Mm. Yeah. I just think she made a choice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the film she was in was a low-budget adult movie. And that, that was what she chose. Like, Maybe, but, that's, yeah. but that's the thing. I absolutely loved her. I yeah. thought she was amazing, yeah. Because, you know, the whole cringe thing, I yeah. just couldn't watch it without being like, oh, God. <laughs> you know? I think she did really well at portraying that because it, it made me feel I suppose, yeah. She, she did well to play the oblivious character. Mm-hmm. I mean, seemingly everybody was oblivious, but she was the only person who had a lot of hints as to what was going on before mm. being oblivious. Yeah. Mm. Her acting in this film, it was very breathy. It was lots of like, oh, oh, come watch me file. Like, she was always slightly asthmatic in her delivery of lines. Yeah. And it was a lot of like opening her eyes really, really wide and not blinking. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. the, she, 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 she does that though. Yeah, that is her style. Yeah. 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 I think, to me, she was just trying to flirt yeah. with somebody that she knew was not available type thing, but like making it really awkward. Mm. You know, just like trying to seduce this woman into mm-hmm. finding her attractive yeah. which obviously did work to a certain extent oh, at yeah. the end but like to me it was her like basically throwing herself on May mm. the entire film yeah. mm-hmm. hoping that it would get somewhere but I think it was just about getting a jealous reaction mm. did they sleep together? they definitely uh, kissed they kissed yeah I think May did end up liking her as well oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I definitely got that but mm. did they actually have sex at one point? Because you, 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 you never see the scene, obviously, but mm. I got the impression that they did. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. I mean, the way that May attached to her, 
suggested that they might have done, but I guess she attached. She attaches to herself him very quickly to this, people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they hadn't slept together when she was all, all like, "He's mine," or whatever. Mm-hmm. Sure, but she yeah. was getting jealous, and I think that sorry, May was getting jealous, and mm-hmm. I thought that that was just Anna Faris's character basically taking exactly what she wanted from that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Also, Anna Faris's character was always dressed like she was going to the club. <laughs> like, she's working in this veterinarians and like, May is wearing like a proper like, you know, professional like, almost like a smock, you know, like this kind of... Yeah. <laughs> and Anna Faris is just dressed in these like, cocktail dresses like she's just about to hit the town with her girls. Like, yeah. I did wonder if like, the population of the town they lived in was like four people. Yeah. And that was why it was like, oh, well, it's you, it's you or nobody. Like, yeah. Not many choices. Yeah, because given that she is, that the May character has absolutely no social skills and no personality particularly is, is cripplingly shy is socially awkward with, with terrible fashion sense as well um, she, her batting average is impressively high mm. I was about to say yeah for someone of all that like she's everyone she meets fancies her yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like I'm so terribly lonely but literally every character who meets her is in some way respect attracted to her like, mm. <laughs> just on, on face value yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly mm. well I think that what the film is saying is that like if you've got some deformity, you know, such as a lazy eye mm. or anything else or something emotional, if you just get that one tiny little thing fixed, everything will go perfect for you. Mm. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's, that's as long message. As, you, as yeah. long as you can refrain from killing people. Yeah. <laughs> or st- and or stalking them. Yeah. Yeah, but it seems quite difficult <laughs> yeah. judging on that film. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it all comes to a head. So basically she has this brief relationship with Jeremy's sister and then he dumps her because she gets too weird. She bites his lip, etc. Well, one time she goes to his house and just stands outside his door for like four hours. <laughs> And then he opens it. He's like, "How long have you been there?" She's like, "Like since two And it's like pitch black outside. <laughs> it's like, "Okay." So then they break up, and then she she goes back, and she she hears him talking with his flatmate, who's not there later, mm. push up guy, calling her a lunatic, saying, "Yeah, thank God I'm out of that situation. What a freak she was." She's very upset, and then she goes back to Anna Faris, who she's obviously already kissed as well. And then Anna Faris is it, unfortunately Anna Faris's character is called Polly. Should have mentioned that earlier. And unfortunately, it turns out she lives up to her name because she is, in mm. fact, Polly because mm. she's uh, sleeping with, well, an ambulatory pair of legs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she turns up at Polly's house and there's just like a pair of legs just like kicking themselves and crossing themselves and just being sexy. Mm-hmm. And she's like, who's that? And she's like, oh, that's this girl I'm sleeping with. And uh, May is obviously very upset by that, even though Polly's like, you know, you're still my number one gal, but yeah. Mm. Let's number number let's, two's in the back. Number two's yeah. in the back. I just couldn't resist the opportunity. Right. <laughs> All of this thing, like the lesbian characters in this film, were all basically porn lesbians, like Anna Faris's character, and also this other girl who later de- does develop a torso in her head, and is called Ambrosia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a name as yeah. well. So she finds out Polly's sleeping around as well, and she's just kind of she's feeling very down. She's feeling very lonely, and then she goes back to her flat and she's having a cry because she's been rejected by two people in the space of a couple of days. And then she's like to the cat, the cat that, that Polly has given us to look after. She's like, come here, ki- kitty. I've had a really rough few days. Come here, please, kitty. And the cat's just like, screw you, bitch. <laughs> like a normal cat. Like, exactly. Like yeah. a, as a cat would. <laughs> and so she gets very angry and she kills it. She kills that cat. And this is the point in the film where I was like, oh, so May appears to have superhuman strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she, it's, it's like an underarm throw yeah. of an ashtray, mm-hmm. which intentionally and successfully murders the cat. Silently, the cat doesn't even like Row! it. Just yeah. dies. It's, yeah. it's just, it just cuts to like she throws it. You hear the ashtray hit the ground, mm. and then it cuts to like just the dead cat like, covered in blood. Like not even just dead. Like it's like its head has exploded. Yeah, like she's properly killed that cat. Mm. Right. So she does that, and then she puts the cat in the in the freezer, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. My neighbour used to do that. Really? Yeah, she's um, you know the term crazy cat lady. Okay, yeah. Well, this is one of them. She has problems with letting go as well, I okay. think. Of cats? Uh, yeah. Okay. So has she got a cat freezer then? I, I, I hope so. I hope it's not just the one freezer for cats and food. Well, I was going to say, you, <laughs> you don't, don't want to mix, mix them yeah. in, yeah. But Unless would, she's got good recipes she can I, share. I, I wouldn't put it past her. And what yeah. did you just say? Good recipes that she could share. As in... Cat recipes. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> how do you know, okay, how do you know that she keeps ingest? cats in a freezer? Because... Uh, some of my siblings used to go there and work. Like, it's a farm. They used to go and work there sometimes. Okay. So they so, literally stumbled onto cats some... in a freezer. Yeah. Yeah, I should ask people about that, actually. That sounds quite traumatic. Yeah. Uh, maybe not Maybe I shouldn't ask film. about them, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will not show no. this film to... Is that that awakens something I've long forgotten. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the only horror story from, from that neighbour, but uh, that's another time. Let's <laughs> take that off the podcast, yeah. So she freezes the cat... 
Mm-hmm. And then she meets another character, a, a, a very brief love interest. Poor, poor, lovely, punky blank. Ah, uh, with yes. his cartoonishly large hair. Yes, I felt so. Juju beans. With his juju beans, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I felt so sorry for this poor sweet guy who just seems like a really na- probably the nicest character in the film. He, he genuinely was, wasn't he? He was just such a lovely what? guy. You were being sarcastic. No, I'm serious. Oh, okay, fair enough. So. I was- Sorry. Well, like, he sits down next to her. She's sat down on a park bench in town. Mm. And he sits down and he's like, are you okay? Like, he seems genuinely concerned mm. for her. And like, I mean, I do feel like he also... The, the I act- think he was trying to hit on her. Oh, he was, yeah. totally, yeah. Mm. Which, again, I'm like, wow. She's doing better than I am. She, exactly. <laughs> I, was saying, I was like, you, you've had more action in a week than I've had in, like, a year. Come yeah. on. Like, <laughs> my sympathy for you is limited at this point. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, that poor guy. That poor, poor guy. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> but he also seemed like he might have thought he was in a porn film. <laughs> What? Because he got home and it's like, Phew, it's a bit hot it's in so here. It's so hot. I need when, to like, take it's my clearly shirt not hot. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. When you said that he's a nice guy, I'm just like, but the first thing he does is takes his shirt off. That's mm. not nice guy. I mean, all he's doing is innocent, bad flirting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas pretty much everybody else in this film is just like, oh my God, you're the best thing ever. Kill me. Yes, yeah, so he takes his shirt off. Then he goes to get a drink or something from the freezer. Mm. And then he finds the, the dead cat in the freezer. Mm-hmm. We forgot to mention the doll from the first part of the film is throughout the whole film the doll is still reacting very present reacting to things yes mm. um, did the doll's face change or was that just my no I think it, there were so many close-ups yeah. on that doll's face but because the little doll's face was kind of changing to the different mm. scenes different right. yeah. but the glass case that it's in keeps cracking to represent her fractured mind her mm. fractured psyche mm. the glass is cracking mm. um, I like how we got the sound effects adapts like throughout the film yeah yeah, yeah. glass cracking mm. yeah but yeah, so at this point she's having a real psychological break. She's killed the cat. She's been dumped by two people. And so when this when this guy finds the dead cat, she's like, "Are we going to be friends for best friends now?" And he's like, "No, you're a freak." Yeah. And then she once again displaying superhuman strength, grabs a pair of scissors, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And stabs him through the front of his skull into his brain mm-hmm. through two hands as well. Through yes. two hands, yeah. two hands. Like yeah. my God, she's freakishly strong. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. And yeah, he's he's her first human victim. Mm-hmm. Do you have any ice cubes I can rub on my nipples? Ooh. Freeze! <laughs> That's the idea. Stop! Well, what the fuck is that? Friend. <laughs> this is some sick shit! So, are we like best friends now that you've seen what's inside my freezer? Are you, you fucking freak! I'm not going to be your friend. Then the film really kicks up a notch. Because then she goes, like, fully crazy. The spree is started. The, spree, the killing spree begins. Now mm. she's realised that, like... It goes. It calls back to the line her mum says, where she's like, if you can't find a friend, make a friend. And she's like... Oh, oh I didn't, didn't put that together. Yeah. Okay, mm. yeah. Oh, oh, also... Oh, actually, you know what breaks it? Actually, we forgot to mention. The other side plot is that she takes a job at some point. Well, this is happening. She takes a job at a school which we mentioned earlier, mm. a school for the blind. Mm-hmm. She's working with blind kids, which seems like the kind of job where you'd need some kind of evaluation. Qualification yeah. or mm. DBS. She's, you would think it would become very quickly apparent that she's not cut for this. No. But anyway, she's working with all these blind kids and she takes the doll into the classroom. I thought initially that she was unaccountably been left alone with the kids, but she's not because then you, when it happens, you see the reactions from the other teachers. Mm. And there's like four or five of them. There's a yeah. lot of them. It's not like a one teacher for 30 kids, which is quite standard. Mm. It's about three or four teachers per child. <laughs> yeah, but she brings out the doll in the glass case, and the ca- the glass is already like really cracked. And she's like, "What do you think it is?" And all these like blind kids are like pouring at that literal broken glass. You're like, "Somebody step in!" Yeah, this is bad. This shouldn't be happening. What, uh, and what did she expect blind kids to get other than it's yeah. a box? Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what she was hoping to get out of this. Yeah. <laughs> this is my best friend. My best friend. And I didn't even realize until just last night. (laughs) It's just a box. Her friend must be inside. That's very good, Deidre. Take it out. I can't. And then, of course, the doll falls on the ground. The case shatters. There's broken glass everywhere. 
and we have a scene that clearly I'm a monster for finding it so funny when you guys were just horrified by it but this comically awful scene where all these blankets are literally crawling over broken glass just screaming like no and there's blood everywhere and they're like oh it hurts so much yeah. and oh I laughed yeah. <laughs> they're what just they making know? it worse for themselves because it's well. so stupid it's like so like over the top it's like it's camp well, yeah. And I'm assuming she gets fired right away, as in May. You'd think she's clean. Oh, yeah. She's, she's yeah. lost that job. But so all of these things happening basically contribute to her having this complete psychological break. And she decides, okay, I'm going to make a friend then. It is odd that May, despite having the... So I guess it happens afterwards when she murders the punk. Mm-hmm. So having the superhuman strength to stab him through two hands on a skull. Mm. Lose as a tug of war to a small child. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her physical yeah. strength is definitely um, variable in this film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she loses her best friend as the doll. Yeah, because yeah. the doll gets broken, covered in blood and stuff, and she's imperfect. Now. Sure, yeah. Because before now, the doll has been perfect. Mm. She needs a perfect friend. So yeah, then she basically she dresses up as the doll. Mm-hmm. She's wearing the yeah. doll's dress. I did yeah. really enjoy how. Yeah. Just as a happy coincidence, mm. it was Halloween. Yes. And she was dressed up as a doll and she was covered in blood carrying an ice cooler as though she was a serial killer. And I was like, well, that's a great costume. Cool costume. And at no point was she like, it's not a costume. Well, yeah, well, there's a bit of timing, cause, though, isn't cause it? Because I, I would have been, I, I couldn't have kept the straight face. and just like, it's just not a costume. This yeah. Is, this is real. <laughs> You'd be a terrible serial killer. Yeah. True. Yeah. As long as I'd be a witness and just like, hey, guys, <laughs> I, I've done it. <laughs> Yeah, because there's an extra who says, like, hey, you got a couple of cold ones in there? When she's dragging the... Yeah. And she says, yeah, a few. <laughs> that's, the, that's the comedy of the film. Yeah, exactly. This film definitely is comedic. Even though it's really sad in some ways and really, like, dark, it definitely has a very comedic vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, she has this gothic vampy makeover, dresses the doll, and then she goes... She, well, she goes to Polly's first, Anna Farrah, she kills her. Like, she sp- slits her neck. Mm-hmm. Then she goes to... Oh, she kills her girlfriend first. Oh, she kills... Amb- no, she kills Polly, then she kills Ambrosia. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah, Ambrosia yeah, yeah. comes yeah, yeah. in drunk. Because Ambrosia's got great legs, great gams. Yeah. Gams. Yeah. And then she, because you know, every shot of Ambrosia begins at the leg and then pans up, and you see the mm. rest of her. Yeah. So she kills Anna Faris for her neck, and then yeah. she kills Ambrosia for her legs. Presumably cuts the bits off that she wants, puts them in this um, travel case she's got going. Mm. And then she goes to Jeremy's sister's house, and uh, he's with his new girlfriend, who foolishly invites her in. Mm-hmm. Very foolishly. Mm-hmm. You're the crazy person who's stalking my boyfriend? Come on for a cold one. Yeah. Have a pint. Let's play poker. She kills them. So yeah, then she takes all these corpses back to her house and basically stitches them into a living Frankenstein doll thing. Mm. I was trying to figure out what is what. So it's it's Anna Faris's neck. It's the punk's arms. It's Ambrosia's legs. Billy's hands. Billy's girlfriend's ears, because she likes the earrings. Mm. And she even skins the cat and makes it into a wig, which I, I loved. God. I loved that. <laughs> yeah, so she makes this whole friend out of um, out of body parts, basically. So at this point, the film's just like this. It's gone into the realms of full horror, but then it takes a real re- real turn at the very end, mm. where she has this complete meltdown, where she's like, "You can't see me. You can't hear me." She, I think because it's like she has this need to be seen or something because she's so isolated. Mm-hmm. And then, she, so she decides in her mania that she needs to give it one of her own eyes. So she stabs herself in the eye, like scoops out her own eyeball, mm. puts it onto the doll, and presumably dies. I mean, how did you interpret this ending scene? To me, I interpreted it that she had fulfilled her fantasy, mm-hmm. and therefore, yeah, was manic, um, and mm. her hallucination was encouraging this doll to respond to her as if it was alive yeah uh, which I wouldn't say is because she was dying mm-hmm. I just imagine she was exhausted from killing all these people and all you know her sure, day has been fairly long hectic yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah so I, the, the way I saw it was that it's open ended that yeah. she may well wake up the next day still cuddling the doll type sure. thing okay. I don't I, think yeah, it was I, I absolutely away. agree right. no I, I didn't for a second get that she she died or anything well, I just she stabbed herself that... in the face in the eye not yeah. like through the skull into the brain she just true maybe yeah. I mean, she's going to lose a lot of blood though yeah she may well like scientifically may not survive sure but I don't know whether that was the way the film yeah. interpreted it I did not appreciate the doll eyes that the that her friend had first mm. um, before she took her own eye out and put it there <laughs> yeah they freaked me out more than anything really? else really <laughs> that's <laughs> <a freak> <laughs> Yeah, r- rather than bits of people sewn together. Mm. No, it was the broken doll. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's interesting that different things trigger different people. Right? Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, so the last shot of the film is she's obviously badly injured, if not dying, uh, and she's cuddled up to this Frankenstein creature that she's created, and then you just see the creature's hand reach over and stroke her hair, which may be a fantasy. I guess it's open-ended. Mm. And yeah, the film ends with this kind of... To me, that was a positive note. Yeah, like hopeful. Yeah, well, just like she got what she needed. Yeah, yeah, finally she had something that she needed. You know, mm. this whole film she's been trying some like to find somebody that doesn't judge her, that will give her that closeness. And sure. She couldn't find it, and it all makes sense as to why she couldn't. She's too weird for anybody. Mm-hmm. But there's something that's non-judgmental that will caress her and mm. yeah make her feel loved in some way that I feel that her character never had Mm. throughout the entire film or her character's life. The ending made me feel happy, yeah. I wouldn't say happy for for me personally. Yeah, yeah, happy's not the the emotion that I'll convey, but it's satisfaction. Mm. Yeah. No, I'd sorry, I would still say happy, but that's Mm. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. (laughs) Well, that's you, you the person who grew up in a dark room full of dolls. (laughs) Oh, fucking (laughs) hell. When you put it like that, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, but overall, I'd say it's a good choice, Kit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I oh, good. I'm glad. glad. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad. Yeah, absolutely. This this is a film I don't think I ever would have seen normally, and I, I was yeah. very interested by it. I thought it was... I really appreciate films that subvert expectations and do things that you don't expect, and this film mm. absolutely did that. Like, it wasn't just some run-of-the-mill slasher film. Like, yeah. It really had some interesting ideas that it put out there and it did a lot of interesting things so it yeah. leaves you thinking as yeah. well. definitely I'm, really, I'm so happy good yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you appreciate it definitely. Uh, words can't describe <laughs> but I don't have to talk to you do I I can just feel and you'll feel it right here, too. Okay, so shall we do some drinking games? Yes, let's do that. I don't know why I did yes. I like yes. Sean Connery. Sean Connery <laughs> drinking games. <laughs> Better than this. If Sean Connery was in this movie, who would he play? Uh, he'd play... Um, what's his face? The main man with the good hands. Oh, I disagree. I think he would absolutely play blank. Because Sean Connery is famous for his wigs. He went bald very early into his James Bond career. So imagine uh, Sean Connery with that wig. Yeah. Like the punk hair. Yep. That'd oh, be pretty okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> that'd be good. Because that'd be a, kind of a cameo as well. So. Yeah, and I'd like to see Sean Connery reacting to finding a, fro- a dead frozen cat corpse in a freezer. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a, what a film. What an image. <laughs> okay, do you want to go first for drinking games? Sure. So I've said drink whenever she names a body part out loud. Okay. Yeah. Mm, fair There's enough. a fair few of that. There's gams. Oh, <laughs> neck, whatever. Mm. Pins. Yeah. It's her go-to compliment, yeah. isn't it? It's like, you have a beautiful neck. Mm. Because yeah, Anna Faris says, what should I dress up for as Halloween? And she just goes, you have a beautiful neck. She's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Didn't answer my <laughs> That's question. That's all I needed to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> May, I would like you to meet a new friend of mine. Her name's Ambrosia. Nice gams. Aren't they? Yeah. Do you have one? Oh, drinky game. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, th- I was thinking drink every time she wears a new item of homemade clothing. Oh, those homemade Solid. clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to me, a while to work out that they were homemade clothes and mm. not just uh, old clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're pretty terrible. Like, yeah, they're all like curtain fabric, aren't yeah. they? Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I like it when Jeremy Sisto says, "Do you make your own clothes?" and she takes it as a compliment. She's like, "Oh yes, thank you for yeah. noticing." Like, <laughs> clearly, he's saying that because they look like shit. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do not sort of awkward feeling sorry for a laugh, but it's true though. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And I'm also there, just like, how many times have I fallen for that as well? Like, yeah. Just like, oh, cheers, yeah, I cut it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, that jumper you got there was. Uh... You stitched that yourself, yeah? Yeah, cheers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got paid very well for it, thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, so drink whenever she touches something. Well, anything, right? She, she she touches a lot of things, like d- different people, different clothes. Oh, like touches something different. inappropriately. Yes, yeah, okay. it like touches or strokes or feels or something. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, there is a there's a lot of a lot of that. Mm-hmm. There is, yeah. Touches dolls, touches mm-hmm. blind kids, touches her eyes. Ooh, yeah. Ah. Ooh. 
Well, yeah, well, my next one was drink for gross eye stuff, which, as I've mentioned, didn't appreciate. <laughs> like, obviously, her putting her contact lenses in. Does she get a bit of glass in when the doll case shatters? She gets a bit of glass in her eye. Oh, oh, yeah. no, didn't like, did not like she that. She starts myself. rubbing it as well. Yeah, it's it? like, don't do yeah. that, you'll make it worse. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. oh. Just scouring her Hated eye. it, hated it, hated <laughs> it. Yeah. And last one, drink whenever you hear or see glass breaking. Mm. Okay, that's a good one, yeah. Because that, that's fairly intentionally throughout the film. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's that's all my drinking games. Yeah, uh, me too. So I guess it's time to talk a little bit about Patreon. So, Kit, do you know what Patreon is? I actually do, yes. Tell us what it is then. So can I start from a band called Pomplamoose? Yeah, start sure. wherever you want, yeah. Half of that band, it's a guy and a girl duo, and he's one of the creators of Patreon. Really? Oh my God, yeah, he must be he loaded. started it off. Yeah, no. He he used to talk about it all the time because he was like, oh, I'm trying off this website. It's well, a friend well, of yours. No, sorry, no, no. I was going to say. Oh, God damn. Kids. I think no, no, that, that, that could be like, well, well, I, know. I, was, I was like, yeah, I'm rolling in it. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I should have phrased that differently. But yes, no, they were one of my favourite bands when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And he started talking about this Patreon thing. Okay. And next thing I knew, it fucking exploded. Mm. Like it should have done. But mm. yes, yeah. so... I do know a little bit about Patreon. So tell us what it is. Uh, well, you, you get patrons from around the world essentially sponsoring you, don't you, really? As, 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 a, as a black and white version of what it would be on yeah, paper. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. In, in, the same, yeah, in the same way that Mozart was, you know, had many patrons around. That's Mozart's really on Patreon? Oh, he is, yeah. <laughs> literally, literally, look him up. He's doing some really good stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah, really improved. For just £5 yeah. pound a month, you get a new symphony. Every <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do have patrons from around the world. We have patrons in Australia, in America. We've, uh, That's how it should be yeah, for artists. Yeah. Well, we are artists, definitely. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Ken. Thank That's you. all right. You're welcome. But we'd like more. Okay, so, um, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. So uh, we are available on patreon.com slash set, And for... Uh, no matter how much you donate, between two and fifteen thousand dollars a month, you can get any of our bonus features, mm-hmm. which include a bonus show called Beyond Beyond the Box Set, in which Kit, I think you made a background appearance on our Mamma Mia episode. Sweet, yeah, um, a few hours ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah, every week there we re- we review films in the cinema right now. Mm-hmm. Also, any patron supporters can choose a film for us to do on that bonus show. So that'll be a film that's not really qualifiable for the main show. So a film that does have a sequel for, you know, it could be Paddington, it could be Mamma Mia. Like, they've both got sequels. We won't do them on the main show. We'll do them on a bonus show. Also, when you're a patron, you can uh, you can choose a film to happen on the main show, actually, and we would encourage you to guest on the show as well. Mm-hmm. So that could be from wherever you are in the world, because, you know, we can Skype in. So, yeah, people can choose, you can choose a film for us to pitch sequels to, and you can join us online and... Uh have a whole episode based on your favourite film that never got a sequel. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all Which kit you've just done. Do you, mm-hmm. have, you, have, you, have you enjoyed it so far? Yeah. Well, you do know I was £50 I was, a month. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, after my $15,000 a month, I mean, mm. I would have hoped you would have invited me on at one point. Mm. Yeah. yeah, You're welcome. Thank you the for your generosity. The biggest provider on Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. I feel like we're missing something. And we also, uh, once a month, is it once a month? I don't know, you, you seem to know better than Oh, me. yeah, you can. Uh, for- every now and then we will do a 30-second advert for any of our patron supporters. Now, this can be for anything you want to support. It can be your own podcast, it can be a business you run, um, it could be some place you work, such as a pub. Kit, do you, do you care to do a little 30-second ad, ad slot? For example, the best pub in the world, the Chemic Tavern in mm-hmm. Woodhouse. Yes. Go on. In Leeds. And Harry is now working there. Mm, I yeah. know. Thank you. Congratulations, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's the best place to work. LS62NG, yeah. you know, postcode, there we yeah. go. And Harry did the website. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, it. Yeah. Cool. that's, that's uh, it. So essentially, you get an advert on the show. Yes. Um, if there is an advert for, from the show this week, drop my letter in now. We know you love box sets. And the area outside of them. Do you ever wonder what people see in artists like Garth Brooks and Insane Clown Posse? There's a lot of hidden value in this music, and we want to understand why people are so dedicated to these artists. We're Think Outside the Box Set, and we almost accidentally stole the name of Beyond the Box Set. Join me, Cameron DeWitt. And me, Nathan Hunt. As we listen to artists that many people dismiss, maybe for good reason. Check out boxset.website. Or your preferred podcatcher. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Okay, sequels. Great. Are you going first this week, Harry? Yeah, I'm going first. So mine is called May 2, A Tribute to May. May 2, A Tribute to May. Yeah. Okay. Or could it be A Tribute to May? Remove the May 2. Sure, yeah. So the main character in this I've thought would be played 
I, I needed somebody who was nerdy and like around the same age as uh, what's her face from from the first film. Sure. Um, and the only person I could think of was Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, from Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Scott Pilgrim knows about the stuff. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to start with him. He's sitting at his computer watching a trailer for a documentary. Just accounting the events of May of the, of the actual film. Oh, okay. So it's like so, it's on the news that it's happened, like some killer's gone on loose and killed all these people. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe this is a few years later. Let's call it, you know, 16 years later, like the film okay. was or something. So this is like a Netflix documentary about this famous crime. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. You know, sort of like an American crime story sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Um, which I thought would be good. Cause... Is it a dramatisation or is it just a documentary? I say a dramatisation. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's a film within a film. Yes. Yeah. I, I've not put the effort in to go and recast everybody in the film. Sure, okay. Can we do a quick a quick recast now, do you think? Uh, I think May should be played by Saoirse Ronan. Oh, that's a really good shout. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, who's um, the the man? I keep forgetting his name. With his sexy hands, uh, Jeremy's sister. See, if you hadn't said Michael Sarah, <laughs> Do you think he'd be good for this? No, maybe not. He's not really masculine enough. Because um, Jeremy Sisto's character on this is supposed to be like... A mechanic, yeah. That's yeah, like mechanic. super sexy. True. And yeah. Michael Sarah is not never sexy. that part. No, that's true. He's a, he's a confident nerd. He is, yeah. Which is weird. <laughs> what about the guy who plays Steve in Stranger Things? Yeah, that's good. He's already got the big hair. Yeah? Yeah, like it. That works, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anna Faris? Anna Faris could be... Uh, it's somebody else who's going to really, like, chew the scenery. I think Margot Robbie could do it. Oh, that's a really good show. Yeah. Yes. She's, she's got the personality for it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So we, we, we got ourselves... We've little, got something there, yeah. Got a, got a little cast there. Okay. This doesn't play into the rest of the... Okay. Right. <laughs> so he's just watching this very star-studded... So, yeah, he, he, he watches this documentary of this... Yeah. Sure. Which, uh, which kind of inspires him, plus a group of other people online to come together in some, some kind of chat room, which I guess for the sake of the film is going to be using webcams, which mm-hmm. I don't think is how chat rooms work online. Sorry? I think people normally just type things, mm-hmm. don't they? I don't think massive video conversations happen when people are scheming things. This film involves scheming. Mm-hmm. Moving on. People use, web, people use webcams in chat rooms. Do they? Yeah, chat that's... roulette. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Different basis, kind of chat it's the, room, it's the basis of a lot of internet porn. It's just... Yeah. Well, this isn't about porn mm-hmm. yet. Okay. So we see in the background that he has a wall covered in articles and photos of, of May and different photos of her perfect creation. Oh, so he's obsessive about He something. is an absolute obsessor, yes. Okay. Is May dead? We don't know. Okay. Um, it's not, she, she's not in this. It's, okay, fine. It, it, it's not important. We, she could be in jail, could be dead. Yeah, we don't sure. know. Okay. So obviously we don't see much of the doc- documentary, but uh, yes, yeah, so now we go into the chat room. What the people in the chat room want to do is they want to take May's idea of creating this this perfect being mm-hmm. and just build on it. Okay. And they want to create a perfect family. Oh, okay. So Out of dead body parts. Well, not necessarily out of dead body parts, but yes, out of dead body parts. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that was May's idea. It was like, hey, let's kill people and make a person. I think it was just like, I need, I need a perfect person. Okay. So these people want a perfect family. Right. So... I don't think it'd be that interesting to see them putting together a perfect house. So let's just say that someone already has that. Okay. I don't know. Or maybe there'd be a montage of them building a house. Building a perfect house, like a model home. Yeah. Uh, the sort of thing I'm thinking is something like, uh, you know, those sort of infomercials from like the 40s or something of like this perfect suburban house. Okay, right, yeah. Um, you know, the sort of thing that Matt Damon was in last year. Suburbicon. Oh, Suburbicon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh. almost exactly that. You know what? Make the film on the theme of that. Okay, sure. So they're in a, suburban, a Suburbicon-esque perfect model house. Mm-hmm. So now all they need is the people to go in it. Sure. So their idea to come up with a, uh, with a source for the people of the house, they decide to make a... Well, to pretend to make a horror movie. Mm-hmm. And they try and get all the best actors, all the perfect actors, to come in and make this horror movie. Okay. Now the twist is, all the scene. This is kind of inspired by the, the Anna Faris death scene in this. Okay. Is that, uh, well, these things they're using as props of like prop knives and guns and stuff. They're not props. It's all real. Mm. So people are really dying. They... So, yeah. So it's, it's it's a horror movie where the actors come in who are actors who are well known for having, you know, the best legs. Oh, or, okay. you know, a great rack. And uh, it goes on. Everybody gets killed in gory, horrific ways, which are 
horror movie tropes, I would say. Sure, okay. A film filled with horror movie tropes. Okay, I like that. They become the horror film itself. Exactly. It's like, I, you're like a snuff, then. I, yeah, I, I guess. I say um, that that's a good thing, I just... Comparison. No, yeah, no, that, that's actually a good analogy for it. Cool. Not really an analogy, it's the truth. But yeah. Because, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking with the whole Anna Faris scene of when... Uh, what's the faces behind her with the scalpels at her neck like no. well how did Anna Faris know that they weren't actually real because like you know they looked real to us watching the film oh so I mean the actress Anna mm. Faris you're breaking the fourth wall here you're like how did Anna Faris the actress not know that she was actually going to get killed like, well no I'm, I'm using that as an example sure, just okay. like maybe there's a similar kind of scene in this film that you know that, that the Michael Sarah makes you know people are going to die and maybe they're going to get their throat cut and they think it's just a blunt stage knife Mm-hmm. Or they, you know, they think it's a gun that's not got any bullets in it, or however they do it in films. Yeah, none of that's true, and in fact, all the actors end up dying and have their body parts harvested. Yikes! That's pretty much where I've got. Okay. And uh, yeah, they do manage to hack together a, enough for a perfect family. So all of these famous actors get killed. Yes. In real life. Yes. In this film, and their body parts are used to create a perfect family. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like an art installation or something. I don't okay. Know. <laughs> who's underwriting this? Like, who's ensuring this? Like, how is this being legalised? It's murder, John. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's murder being broadcast on television. Like, it's being live broadcast. Oh, okay. oh, they film it and then they send it. To yeah, as though it's like a future film to be made in cinema. Oh, I see. So maybe it ends with Michael. Like, carry on. Sorry. So my, Michael Cera is involved in this, right? Yeah. Mm. So maybe the film ends with Michael Cera taking the tape to having killed all these famous celebrities, mm. taking the tape and showing it to like Hollywood exec and being like, Hey, we've got this show we want to pitch. And then it, he literally shows a snuff movie of all these famous actors being murdered. Mm. And maybe it ends with the, like, the guy's reaction. Just like, Oh dear God. <laughs> well, maybe at the time they don't realize that they all these still don't realize. Dead. Yeah. You know, they just think, Oh, it's a horror movie. Oh, wow, that's really, really good. good wow. Like you, you, you got a great cast then you killed them all off. That's bold. Yeah. And then, you know, the film comes out and it's a massive hit and it goes into cinemas and then the press store comes and there's no one around to actually go on the press store. <laughs> Cause they're all dead. And then someone speaks to Michael Sarah and it's just like, well, where is everyone? And he's like, Oh, uh, they're all back at the house. Mm-hmm. He takes, yeah. takes people back to the house and then reveals okay. what's going on there. Okay. Well, this begs an obvious question. Yeah. Which actors, if we're building a perfect dollar of people with great body parts, mm-hmm. which actors are we using and what body parts are we going with? What actors can you think of and specifically have some kind of body item that is... A body part that yeah. they're famous for. Okay, so I think Angelina Jolie's legs. Yes. Remember that, yes, absolutely. Yeah. That famous like pose she did where her legs are just like, mm-hmm. ridiculous. J-Lo's bum, obviously. Yes. No. Yeah. Well, probably that Zac Efron has probably mm. got some body parts. Oh, he's got like love. the full body. He's got yeah, the, yeah. the torso. Justin Bieber, you know, yeah. Did Justin Bieber have a good body then? Oh, I don't know about Justin Bieber. I don't, sorry, I genuinely don't know. I just... <laughs> You're just naming people celebrities say, now. Exactly, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> I know like five names. We can... Uh, Who's yeah, got a good face? Together, then. Jack Black. No, Jane, sorry. Jack Black's got some features. Come on, if you, if you, you know what, t- he does have a good face. Does he? That yeah, you could, you could throw him Jack Black's head somewhere. I was thinking if you're going to take a Jack Black body part, it's going to be his belly. Do you think? Yeah. For grandpa. That's his, that's his, that's it. That's his defining body feature, you know. If you're looking for a good dad bod, you know. True, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be a beard somewhere. He's got a good beard. The guy that played Gandalf? Ian McKellen? Mm. You know, that's a fake beard, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 well, it suited him very well. Oh, oh, oh. Um, like from Hunger Games, the first Hunger Games, the villain that we just talked about in um, Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise's wife's new husband. Oh, Ben Barnes. Not Ben Barnes. The Where's other Bentley? Where's Bentley? Oh, he was in the Hunger Games, wasn't he? Where's it? Bentley's face? Let's get that in there. Okay, yeah, I guess. Um, uh, he's got a good one. Zachary Quinto's eyebrows. Mm, yes. Was that a strong noise? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's been thinking about. Um, what about the elf in um, Lord of the Rings, the blonde one? Oh, oh um, Orlando Bloom. Orlando That's Bloom, one, yeah. Again, not his real ears, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Justin Timberlake. 
These are all people I've heard are attractive. You're just saying people, aren't you? Just well, yeah, I'm, I'm naming people I've been told are attractive, but I don't know which bits are attractive. So. Okay, well, anyway. Fair enough. Michael Sarah gets a group of these people together, takes part from them, and turns them into a perfect family. End of story. That's that. That's um, a tribute to May. Oh, I see, because they're literally building a tribute to May. Mm-hmm. Okay, They're yeah. taking her idea, expanding on it. Interesting. Okay. You know how Alien was about one alien? Aliens, yeah. about loads of aliens. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. But the, the logic is irrefutable. It could be like a real comment on a celebrity where like all of these celebrities are getting killed and no one's even noticing. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. cool. Like it. Okay, over to you. Well, I didn't realize we had to come up with a title, so I just quickly came up with one. May is back. May is back. Cool. Mm-hmm. Right. And what I was thinking was it would be really, really cool if May didn't die at the end of the film. Okay. She woke up you know, in arms with this dead body thing and the police are there and they arrest her type thing. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking she might have been in a coma for like a week, you know, like give them time to catch up to her and all that kind of stuff. Okay. She's been through a lot. Mm. So basically the sequel is on a similar line in a way to Orange is the New Black. Ooh, yeah. I was just thinking, imagine so, they in the prison with the Orange is the New Black. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm thinking maybe like, it's a like an asylum type thing rather than just a normal prison. Mm-hmm. Like, because she's she's done something really fucking weird, hasn't she? Like mm-hmm. killing so many people. Mm-hmm. So she's got to be in like you know proper like confinement, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But in with people where May is actually the sanest. Wow. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think it'd be really. Now cool. we're talking. So yes. she's on the psych yeah. ward of Orange of the New Black. Really. Essentially, yeah. Okay. Where everybody else is a bit worse than her mm-hmm. and wow. she's actually the same one yeah so does she like rise to become like the top dog of the psych ward well that's the thing i don't i've, I've not i'm sorry i've not thought that that's all right well let's head. brainstorm I, I don't yeah. think that i don't think that she would be the top no dog. she's not really very dominant, the lowest yeah. wouldn't i she think that in that? an insane asylum she's the sanest yeah she's not going to be top dog yeah top dog is going to be the most she's... dominating person yeah surely so she's going to be just like observing all these situations mm-hmm. of just absolutely crazy people and then at the end of each scene she's going to be like wow yeah. and just walking away yeah but I mean who knows she may rise up the ranks and become like the left hand woman type thing okay. to the actual crazy person the craziest mm-hmm. person yeah. there so um, what I'm thinking with this is mm. definitely a TV show mm-hmm. oh fair enough okay. I'd, 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 well I didn't know if they were allowed yeah oh yeah anything's oh, allowed okay, cool. sorry yeah, yeah. yeah. no let's fair, fair enough yeah let's make yeah, a TV I'd say show definitely, definitely a TV show on a similar kind of style to Wanderers and New Black mm-hmm build it up like that I mean, she works she works her way up the ranks mm. as the show goes on and yeah maybe season the, the end of season one like she's finally gotten the good books of the top dog mm-hmm. and then later seasons she becomes the top dog mm. yeah or maybe drops all the way down to the bottom <laughs> gets put in a solitary confinement no, no. End, end of season two she gets to the top dog and then season three loses it all yeah I'm thinking there has to be a power drop doesn't yes. there but yeah, yes because okay, that's cool. where drama happens yes exactly <laughs> Release the tension. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, talking about actors and actresses, I was thinking the only other person I've ever watched on TV or anything that has made me cringe in a similar way is Kate McCucci. I do not know who oh, that I, is. I know. What's she in? I know so she, she's a comedian. She mm. does a lot of sort of musical comedy. Okay, right. Yeah. As a duo, what I've seen. But she was also Raj's girlfriend on The Big Bang Theory. Yes, I know who you mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. To she me, is. she is the epitome of this is fucking awkward to watch. Yeah. Like, she's just... I don't know whether it's her or it's her character that she plays or whatever, but I think she'd be face. beautiful. Exactly. I think she'd be the perfect one to mm. carry on me. Because that's May such a good shout. That's the person I've been trying to think of. Yeah. It, no, when so you say carry on May, do you mean as a love interest or as like she's now playing the role of May or what do you mean? But, yeah, playing the role of May. Oh, so the same oh, actress yeah. isn't coming back. She's been no, replaced the, by the Kim. same actress is older now. Yeah. Older. Now, oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It would be nice to have her back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she's missed. No, I don't know. But yeah, because she's she, she, she I could come back with another character. To, well, exactly. She could come up as the top dog. Or something, mm. you know? Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. But obviously, she's got an eye missing now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's going to have different, you know, pitfalls depending on what happens in this, you know. Okay. Psych ward. I don't know what you call it. I'm sorry. Is that no, it is. It, well, it, in, in Orange Lady Black, it's psych, isn't it? It's the psych ward. Right. Or the psych. Um, 
department. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Because yeah. I can just imagine. Imagine the shit. She doesn't die. No. It's not a peaceful ending. She hasn't just made her perfect monster yeah. or friend. Life continues. You know, yeah. she's not died in the bliss of the mm-hmm. arms of a reanimated mm-hmm. corpse. Yeah. She's literally waiting for the knock on the door to take her away. Yeah. And this sequel follows yeah. her on that journey. Also, mm-hmm. imagine, like, because obviously in Orange is the New Black, there's always, like, the backstory where you find out how they ended up in prison. Mm-hmm. So like, imagine, like, there's, like, they're all sharing their stories. Like, what what are you in for? Oh, I robbed a bank. Oh, I killed my husband. Or, oh, I killed my kid. Or whatever. What yeah. are you in for? Oh, I chopped several people up and sewed them together to make a yeah. perfect person. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. And, 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 and she's still... The, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. The that, that's the least interesting <laughs> yeah, one. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They're just like, oh, that's child's That's entry play. level, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Because like, every, the top one. every episode, you could just do anything you want. Oh, exactly, because she's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I would love to see that made. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah I like cool. it. That's good. And we could also go into the backstory of the mother then. We could, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> flip it back and forth between now and... You know what? History. That's the role that uh, the actor of May should mm. play. Oh, the mum. mother, yes. yes. That makes more sense. Yes. Mm. Awesome. Cool. Okay. I was thinking if you literally just cast May in Orange is the New Black... Hmm. And she could like totally like pal up with crazy eyes. Like, <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. I think crazy eyes did sort of come into it. I was just yeah. like, mm, yeah, they could. They that could Suzanne and her mm. could definitely strike up a friendship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, an they, inappropriate, they'd be even in a relationship. Love. Yeah, they, they would. They would married. definitely be besties. Yeah, like, yeah, they'd see each other. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I do yeah. wonder what the character of May would turn into if she was given the affection that she actually creates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the whole part of this, the whole thing of this film is that she never really is. Mm. Yeah, even if though everybody was, fancies her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, weirdly. Yeah, yeah. She's just yeah, she's got standards that no one's really fitting towards. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. She's looking for perfection, and yeah. nobody lives up to perfection. So. Just a silent partner. Yeah, <laughs> can never complain. Can mm. never do anything wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's dream. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, on to you. Mm. So my sequel is based on the idea that I, I don't know about you guys, but I spent this entire movie waiting for the doll to start speaking. Mm-hmm. I waited for, for it to start moving. Moving or speaking, yeah. Yeah. Because I just felt like that, I thought that was where it's going. I think speaking would have been a bit much. Speaking would have been too crazy for this film. Sure. Because maybe you're about to say, but who would you cast as the voice? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't possibly. Would it be but... May putting on a voice? Yeah, I would have think that she, makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. she, she yeah. did it. Yeah. There's so many f- scenes where something sh- something crazy will go down, and it'll just cut to the doll, like impa- obviously the doll's face impassively, like you know, mm-hmm. mm. and it was like the doll was reacting to things almost, even though she wasn't because it's a doll. Mm. So it, it was just it, it got to where it was quite funny to me. It was just like everything that happened is like oh, and then the doll's watching the whole thing. Well, I feel like the whole thing, the whole film was pretty much from May's perspective. It was all, oh yeah, it was all going on inside her head, and a lot of it was real, of course. Mm. But you know the. The, seeing the reaction shots from the doll, mm. which is what was going on in May's head. Because yes. as soon as the doll is out of the movie, as soon as the doll dies, essentially, the doll's not in the movie anymore. Oh, yeah. At all. And then it's all just inside May's head, and, you know, she's got this, this sewn-together corpse stroke in her face. Mm. And I interpret that as absolutely just being in her head. So... Yeah, the doll, doll's reactions, the sound of the glass breaking, all in her head. Oh yeah, totally, absolutely, yeah. I agree. It's uh, it's a it's it's kind of about her. As I say, the, the glass shattering represents her psyche shattering, her psychological mm-hmm. makeup, you know, having a breakdown. However, watching the film the first time, I was like, oh, so when's this doll going to start? You know, fucking shit up. You know, like when's mm-hmm. this doll going to start walking around being like, reep, reep, reep. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't happen. Obviously, it was a different film. It wrong footed me, which I liked, mm-hmm. but. So my sequel, I was thinking, well, it's, not, it's, it's kind of a sequel, prequel, sidequel, all in one. So mine is a sequel, prequel, sidequel from the doll's perspective. Mm-hmm. The original film is called May. So my, my film is called Susie, an adult Pixar movie. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh dear. <laughs> and it's basically a Toy Story, but crossed over with... <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I could not have foreseen where this was going. <laughs> Carry on, sorry. Because obviously in Toy Story, the, all the toys are... You know, they come to life, but only when people aren't watching mm. and they have their own kind of adventures and stuff. So I was like, well, what if that was the truth, but in this film? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I want to go back to, again, you mentioned... You, you're talking to a man who this past weekend shed a tear to Toy Story 2. Again? 
That's not even the sad okay. one. That's not even the sad one. <laughs> Toy Story 3 is the sad one. Was this <laughs> during your Sunday hangover? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, yeah. So this film's going to start in the 1960s. Because obviously the mo- in the, at the beginning of the original, of the actual film, May, the mother mentions that she made the doll. So we're going to see how she made that doll. Mm-hmm. Like, Wait a minute. Are we going to... This is, it's been a question in my life, in my head for my whole life. How do the toys in Toy Story get like born? Like, at what point do they become sentient? Yeah. And at what point do they die? Am, am I about to find out one of these questions? Oh, I've not figured out an answer. Certainly not to how they die. I guess they die when they're destroyed. Sure, sure, yeah. And I guess they're born when they are completed? Like, when they are put together? Yeah. So I'm thinking... But how do you find completed... You know, like when the plastic moulds put together, or when they're painted, or what? Like this. I don't, at what point? At what point? I mean, it's a it's a deep. When you paint the eyes, question. eyes. There we go. Yeah. Uh, they are the windows. You know, the eyes yeah. last. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. so we're gonna see them. Wait, but there's some toys that don't have any eyes. <laughs> like what? Then they were never. Alive. Some of the ones from uh, Sid's bedroom in Toy Story One. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. And they're like bits of toys put together. So like, which consciousness? No. no, no. What's your idea? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> we're going to see the mother as a child making this doll. Mm. What do you think the doll was made of? Because it looked fucked up. China for the head. Yeah. And then like bits of fabric for the for the body. So do you reckon she's just using bits and pieces she finds around the home? Yeah. Okay. So she I, made... I assume that she was a bit of a, bit, bit of a craftsman. Yeah, same, she's a bit Same with the daughter. Fair enough, yeah. So she makes this doll and then she puts it in the glass case mm. that can never be opened. Mm. And then she, we see, she goes to bed and then we see the doll come to life. Yeah. But she's trapped in the glass case. She can never leave the glass case. So she's eternally trapped in this case. Right. Which is obviously going to be quite traumatic for the doll. Mm-hmm. The mum's going to have other dolls and toys that aren't in glass cages. Yeah. So that they're, they're going to like be living their own lives as well. But she, they're going to talk to her and stuff and interact with her. But because mm-hmm. she's trapped in the cage, she can't really play with them. And she's she's never touched and she just yearns to be played with. Yeah. She's like, like May yearns for company and human contact and love. This doll yearns to be touched and to be played with, which is every doll's dream. And she can never have it. So she's this really like disturbed doll like it's 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 very sad and she's forced to just watch from behind the glass as this person her creator the mother grows up you know gets older probably throws a lot of the other dolls away but she keeps her because she's kind of more like a memento kind of thing we'll find out why she married that weird shaven headed <laughs> wife beater vest guy who <laughs> you know this might be a montage at the beginning, but she's gonna be watching everything happen as this woman grows up Probably as this woman goes a bit nuts, if she wasn't already a bit nuts in the first place, because mm-hmm. she's clearly a bit disturbed. Mm-hmm. Has a daughter, May. She'll watch May as a baby. Maybe there'll be a scene where she sees May being brought home as a baby, and she'll connect. She'll, be, she'll make a connection. She'll be like a maybe, a maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe she'll make a connection. You've been watching the rest of development, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then she, at some point she's going to be gifted to May. In the film, you see May has again has hundreds of or dozens if not hundreds of other dolls that are all outside the you know she's got all these creepy Victorian dolls in her bedroom mm. so again there's going to be loads of scenes when May is asleep or when she's out where she's all the other dolls are playing and May's just like trapped behind the glass cage again and she can't get out and she's trapped but she wants she dreams of freedom and maybe as the film the events of the film go on she starts to exhibit like psychic powers the doll so she is genuinely rather than being in May's head she genuinely is cracking the glass with her, the power of her mind, it's just okay. her desperation to escape. And she, her, maybe the doll's psychic... I've not thought this through. The doll's psychic... I'm making Sounds this physical. Like yeah, the doll's psychic <laughs> powers are affecting May. Mm-hmm. So it's actually, it is coming from the doll. Rather than it May projecting her mental breakdown onto the doll, maybe the doll is projecting her mental breakdown onto May and causing May to go crazy. So she's like, you know, just trying... The glass is... She, she's shattering the glass bit by bit and she's, you know, projecting all this stuff. Meanwhile, she's having to watch May as May just goes completely do lally. But I'm thinking that the May doll is essentially a good natured, if slightly disturbed kind of, you know. She's like Barbie, you know, she's just a sweet doll. Then she has to watch as when May kills the cat, and she's like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe she's like befriended the cat. Like, oh, the cat's... Oh, oh, no. Yeah, like, you know, like the, the dog in, um, in Toy, Toy Story, Story yeah. is a friend of the dolls in some way. Yeah. Maybe the cat, maybe the cat, maybe she really likes the cat. Maybe she talks to the cat and she's like, oh, Lupe, I'm so lonely. And, mm. uh, and then she sees, and then she, and she sees the May kill the cat, and she's like, "Oh my god, I have backed the wrong horse." <laughs> <laughs> and then she's going to be watching the whole thing, and then she's she's going to be taken to the blind kid school, and she's going to be like, "Finally, people can play with me." And then she's going to like send out this kind of 
mental wave of like, release me from the cage, play with me, play with me, please play with me, dear God, just touch me and play with me. And that causes the little girl to like grab the case and mm-hmm. struggle with it and end up breaking the case. And then suddenly, like, all she wants is to be played with. And then suddenly she's surrounded by blind kids just pouring with blood who are, like, crawling in the glass. And she's like, oh, dear God, what have I done? <laughs> it's all her fault, yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. her fault. <laughs> so she has a complete meltdown. That's basically as far as I got with that. Because what happens to the doll? Does the doll break and then... Uh, so after that, I think May sort of takes her home. Mm-hmm. And, like, she's covered in blood and May's just handling her... Maybe intentionally, I'm not sure, but just handling her way too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that result just pretty much falls apart, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's it's cut weirdly. You can't quite see if May ripped her apart or what. Sure. Okay, but, so uh, maybe... Yeah, she gets pretty much destroyed. Okay. So maybe the end of the film is that so she's been broken in this horrific accident. In the, you know, She got her freedom, but it came at a terrible price. Mm. And so she's been broken, and she's just witnessed all these children being, like, mutilated by her mm-hmm. glass cage and stuff. And then she's broken into pieces, but she's still, the head's still there. So she's probably still alive, yeah. which is a doll. Maybe the head gets put somewhere on like a shelf in May's bedroom. And again, she's forced to just watch as May goes completely crazy and stitches a person together and all this stuff. Oh, and she can't move. She can't move, but she's like, this is me. I did this. This mm-hmm. is my fault. Oh, God. And uh, yeah. Oh, that's tragic. That is. And that's the... Ooh, ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. So you said that the, the fake eyes freaked you out mm. more than the real eye on, on the... Frankenstein yeah, yeah. thing. Maybe before she stabs her own eye out, she uses she takes the eyes from the doll and uses those as the eyes of the Oh god. So then her eyes are all that's left of her. Mm. So her eyes are taken off the doll's head and maybe the eyes so then the eyes are placed onto this new doll. So then suddenly she is she gets a human body. Mm-hmm. So then she watches as May stabs her own eye out, puts it on her, and then so actually when the, at the end of the film when the hand comes over, mm. it's actually the doll, mm. ah. and the doll's like suddenly, and and, and so the so the doll yeah. has personified this body, and like maybe the eyes go away, now yeah. and it's just that one human eye of May's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but the, her spirit is now in a, in a Frankenstein human form. There we go. That pieces together everything, John. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, I took such a thin idea there and managed to <laughs> ram it home. <laughs> that Very was not that. That was not an easy finish <laughs> yeah yeah you nope know? that's 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 solid that works mm. i can see that as a pixar short i cannot oh come on after <laughs> <laughs> we, we saw the incredibles like that was fucking dark as shit that oh yeah you'd, you'd, you'd like that pixar short as well mm. like incredibles yeah. 2 is really boring but the short is it yeah oh. didn't like it didn't oh, care for it oh, i wouldn't say that much but, but uh, the short the short that happens before it mm. Is some fucked up shit, and I liked really? it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's shocking. Fair enough. Oh yeah, like I, I'm not sure if it's okay for kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way you're both looking as you're sort of like thinking about it, I'm just like, yeah, that doesn't seem appropriate for kids. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It, it was. It was not. It was definitely not the little cute birdie thing from Finding Dory. <laughs> no. 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 It was not. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Anyway, so that's um, that's. Susie, an adult Pixar movie. Okay, yeah. Still not a Pixar short. It's it, no. it it it's beyond the level of Incredibles two. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's you know it's it's a bit next level, but yeah. If you want to be a Pixar short, you need a little post credit scene that brings it home for for the kids. I don't think there's anything you can bring. No, no, no there's not. <laughs> I've gone too far. It's not really something you want to teach your kids. No. Yeah, nah, yeah. nah. Mm. Quick question: the blind kids in this movie. The actors that played them, do they know what they were in? Did they see the film? I bet you they don't no. know what they were doing, yeah. I bet you. I've always wondered, because mm. you get kids in a lot of horror films. Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of the times, yeah, the kids don't I see I think they're just they're handled older. well. In the sense that they are just, like, not told everything that's happening, and they're just mm. kind of, yeah. yeah. Very strange. Mm. Oh, it's all very strange. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Listener submissions. So, listener submissions. Okay, so Harry, my drinking game for you this week right. is I'm, I'm going to give you two. Uh, so one is for monk puns. Oh, I was expecting that, obviously. Yes. And the other one is for listener submissions from people who've clearly not seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. It's somewhat obscure. <clears throat> so we had yep, quite sure, a few of our sure. regular contributors submit sequel ideas based on the title alone. So I'll let you okay. be the judge. Okay. So Stuart Gipp said. You've got mail. May enters into an online relationship with Tom Hanks in the commercial infancy of the now widely used internet. 
that's based on the film You've Got Mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, where they have a relationship over email. Sure. It's a very 1999 sort of film. Mm -hmm. uh, Ollie Brady said, Maybe I'm amazed. Paul McCartney is taken by a monster and left in a maze. He's playing himself. Yeah, sure. You're not drinking. These are clearly not from people who've ever seen this film. Since oh, am I supposed to make that judgment? I thought you... You, no. told me, you told me you went to drink. No, I was like, you make the call. You make the call. I don't want that to rest on my shoulders. All right, well. Robbie Daggett just said June. God. <laughs> uh, Kyle David... This is two for what? Two for the price of one here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You okay? Yeah. Uh, Kyle Davidson said um, April, a prequel in which May is briefly friends with April Ludgate from Parks and Recreation. Until April decides she's too weird and moves to Indiana. <laughs> and what, gets with Chris Pratt? I guess, yeah. There's <laughs> a bit of correlation there. You could imagine them being... I could imagine April from Parks and Rec being friends with May, to be fair. Mm. She's a kind of weirdo she'd hang out with. Like. I mean, he's making the correlation because... Anna, Anna Farris? Oh, yeah, Anna Farris dates Chris Pratt. Yeah. Well, was married to Chris Pratt. There we go. Mm. Connections, connections. Yeah. Ira Ray said, meh. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> a, a very passive version of this movie. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to drink for the pun at the minimum. Ryan Johnson said, May the Force be with you. They were on Vespin the whole time. Just Ryan Johnson is in the guy who directed Star Wars episode. It's not right. It's not, sadly, I mean, that would make my life. If, if we got a sequel pitch from actual Ryan Johnson. No, it's Ryan with a Y, unfortunately. Okay. okay. Well, I'll drink for the pun as always. Sure, yeah. Blokebusters, at Blokebusters, said, uh, once again, June, a popular choice. But they did come up with a plot as well. A psychiatrist stumbles across a newspaper article about the previous film and becomes obsessed with finding the body of Amy. As in, that's the body she creates. It's called Amy, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, because it's an anagram of May. She uses the... Ah, uh, yes, it is. Because she uses the... Um, Kit's giving me a nod as though I should have noticed this. The ashtray. Yeah, the ashtray that shatters yeah. on when she kills the cat. Uh, I, get it. I mean, she's crafty. Everything she breaks, she uses. Like, mm -hmm. And there's no wastage in this film. <laughs> becomes obsessed with finding the body of Amy. Through various means, she finds where she was disposed of, but instead she finds May's body. So I guess May died as well. Mm -hmm. Amy, the Frankenstein-y thing, has been in hiding and kidnaps the psychiatrist in an attempt to bring May back to life by grafting her skin onto June's body. June being the psychiatrist, I guess. So wait, Amy grafts... So uh, the the Frankenstein of all the... Ca is, yeah. That's Amy. Yeah, yeah. So Amy is actually alive, I guess. Yeah. Genuinely, not yeah. just in May's head. So she has gone into hiding and she kidnaps this psychiatrist who's confusingly enough called June mm -hmm. and attempts to use June's skin to bring May who has died back mm -hmm. to life I right. think is what's going on okay here. okay I mean, it, it's convoluted but yeah. no no I just want to clarify mm -hmm. that's all yeah June dies having all your skin cut off we'll do that to a person mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and the operation is a success so her skin is grafted onto May's body and brings May back to life but now May and June are sharing a consciousness. So they're both, their consciousnesses are both in this body. Oh, okay. Mm, that, that is, to be fair, that is where the consciousness is stored. In the skin. In the skin. Yeah. yeah. I've heard that before, yeah. Mm. If you get caught in a bad fire, mm. you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Start again. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. The Contrarians at Contrarian Prime mm. said, May meets a man who steals her heart. They get married, but tragedy strikes. Her brother-in-law and his wife die in an accident. So I guess the brother of her husband and his wife die in an accident. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So May and her husband take in their orphaned nephew. Tragedy strikes again, and her husband dies, mm -hmm. and now she's a widow, raising a teen on her own. Mm -hmm. Then she discovers that that teenager has superpowers. Mm -hmm. This movie is called Aunt May. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they, 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 they took a journey there. That was a long road. So yeah. It's a, a fairly decent film. <laughs> they didn't watch the film. No, they clearly didn't watch the film. Although that's a, that's a recasting from the woman who played May in this film to Marissa Tomei. That's, yeah. Wow. That was a kind 20 years. Um, or uh, what's her face from Forrest Gump? Sally Field. Sally Field. What's what? her face from Forrest Gump? Wow. <laughs> what? I don't know. She's got two Oscars. To be called What's a Face from Forrest Gump. <laughs> With one of them Forrest Gump? No. Oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm adding Norma Ray and Places to the, in the Heart into our list of films to watch. Um, we are ignoring the Aunt May from the, the most popular three Spider-Man films. I think she's dead. Is she? Well, she was, all pre she was pretty old in the first. Did, sorry, did you just make an assumption that because someone's old, they're dead? Well, let's look. Is it Rosemary Harris? I believe that you did just make an assumption that because someone's old, they are dead. How is that offensive to assume that someone who was in their early hundreds in 2002 <laughs> may no longer be with us? <laughs> you know what? 
Fair is fair. She is alive. <laughs> she is 90, but she is alive. Last seen in 2012 in the movie This Means War as Nana Foster. Oh, that's an interesting film to end your career on. Mm. Finally, uh, at one Aussie nerd, Cecil Hops said, exactly the same film, but in space. Solid. Yeah. I think that's um, Cecil's go-to, but that's fine. Did it's you, also called June. I was going to say, uh, what about Jason X? Is that the one? Oh, where, yeah. The Friday the 13th, 13th film that's in Jason space. Jason goes to space. Yeah. I need to watch that That again. was the worst film. That I is the worst say. Freddy film. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I love bad horror films. I've got yeah, a DVD same. if you want it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, so those are our listener submissions for this week. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you have any sequel ideas for May or any films we've done in the past, please let us know. We are Beyond the Box Set. You can find us at beyondtheboxset.com. Our podcast is available on all good podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, Acast, Google Play, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. You name it, we're on it. If we're not on it, let us know. You can also find us on uh, Patreon at patreon.com forward slash beyondtheboxset. And we have merchandise available at tpublic.com. And if you like the show, give us a review and uh, recommend us to a friend and hit subscribe and anything you can to tell people about us because it helps us to find new listeners. Mm -hmm. And next week, Harry... Well, before we get to next week... Okay, well, there's more, okay. Kit, you thought you might have got out of it, but no, you have not. Oh, yeah. Oh, So if you were... Yes, if you were to... uh, Harvest a body part. To to cut me and John up and... uh, (laughs) Sew us together. Okay. (laughs) Which parts would you pick from who? I, I would... I don't know. You gotta do it. You gotta pick Okay, it. fine. All right. Well, you've asked for it. Yeah. I, would, I would take your little finger in your right hand okay. and sew it to his big toe on his left foot. Wow. You're welcome. It's not quite what I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting you to say more like Harry's feet, John's legs, whatever. I think the ultimate question that's probably in. It's in my mind, it's probably in John's mind as well. Mm-hmm. So. so Who's penis? Got, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, John. That took a turn. I'm more mature than that. <laughs> All right, fine, so, say you're going to graft hair onto someone. Mm-hmm. Whose would you pick? Well, we all know what answer that would be. Go on. Well, no, you've only asked it because you know what the answer will be. Go on. Well, you've got lovely long locks, haven't you? So, presumably, if I was after hair, I would go for the full head of hair. The full head of hair. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's okay. Lovely. It's nothing to do with hair colour or length. It's just purely if I was looking after more hair, I'd probably... I mean, I'd take your beard, for example. Great. Yeah, there yeah. we go. But if I was going for, like, hair, because I thought so I was So the top of what we're saying is the top of Harry's head and my jaw is being stitched onto it, like... God, that'd look weird. It would. Yeah. If, if any listeners are any good with Photoshop... <laughs> Please do it. Yeah. <laughs> go right ahead. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very weird. Well, I'm aroused. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just John. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> you're aroused by your own bottom half of your head. <laughs> don't judge me. Anyway, so next week, mm-hmm. what is the next week? Oh, we've got another guest on. We have another guest on. Yes. So we have a uh, a guy called Jason Croxon, who I have guested on his podcast, mm-hmm. um, which will be out now. The podcast is called A Conversation with. Each episode, he has a conversation with a random person. For some reason, it was me. So that guest gets to pick the topic. I picked the topic of Scrubs. Mm -hmm. So if you want to listen to about an hour of me going on a rant about Scrubs, tune in to a conversation with. It should be out now at the time of you listening to this. So he's coming on next week. And he's picked a film, which it's crossed my mind before to do on a podcast. And I hope it's going to be a good fun one. Okay. I hope you've seen it. Kit, I don't know if you've seen it. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you both like the actor Heath Ledger? Love Heath Ledger. Um, don't have an opinion, but I've seen him before, yeah. Okay. Are we finally doing Brokeback Mountain? The lost mm. episode? No, we are not. Oh, a Night's Tale? <gasps> yes! Ooh! Oh, there we go. There we go. Another film I saw at the cinema. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, join us next week for A Night's Tale. I'm excited for this. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. Have you seen it? it? I have, yeah. And I'm uh, a-, a while ago, I'm looking forward to watching it again. Great. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... I guess that's it. Thank you, Kit. Mm, thank you. Is there anything you'd like to plug while you're here? Yeah, just mention anything you want. Well, the, the, the Chemic Tavern. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had that opportunity already. Yeah. yeah. ChemicTavern.co.uk. Yeah. If you're in Leeds, it's, it's, gen- it's genuinely the pub that me and John go to all the time. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's considered our local, but it's 
probably not the closest pub to either of us. It's not local to ours, and yet it is our local. It's the one we go to the most. Yeah, I think it speaks to volumes. It speaks, speaks yeah. more so, yeah. I imagine. It's, yeah. it's not there for convenience. It's there for because it's the best place in Leeds. Yeah, because it's the yeah. best pub in Leeds. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. the best place in Leeds for the best people in Leeds. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're going to go customers. there right now. <laughs> yeah, best customers, best staff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, join us all next week, or Four. join us all at the comic. At the Fort A Night's Tale. Mm-hmm. All right. Get okay, your thank you, Kit. Thank you. And, thank and you. bye. 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 Do you have any ice cubes I can rub on my nipples?